everybody, this is Vicki, back with Mika's Craft and Shack. I haven't been around for a while um, with everything going on in the country and things. Um, I've also been dealing with my sister. She's in stage four lung cancer. I have to take her to the chemo every day and things. So I've had a pretty hectic schedule, both mentally and physically. So I haven't really been doing a whole lot crafting. But I did take on a design team project for Caroline Jensen. Um, her Etsy shop is Caroline's Craft Tree. And I will link it and her Facebook page below. Um, the kit that I am using of Caroline's is Mermaid Magic, the papers, and the ephemera. This is a gorgeous kit. A lot of uh, oceans and mermaid themes and things to me are usually on the duller, darker side because, you know, I know it's supposed to be the bottom of the ocean, but I still like bright and cheery. And this one just jumped right out at me because it has the colors and the beauty and everything. So we'll go ahead and get into this. Um, I do want to thank Caroline. I did not get it done by the deadline that I was supposed to, and she was very understanding. I do want to thank her again for understanding what I have been going through and doing. She's a really great lady to work with. I hope you all get the chance to. Okay, this book is a vintage book that I had found at an old library. All the gilding around the outside is all the original. What I did is I took one of the mermaid photos. I did print it on photo paper because I wanted it to pop out more and have that glossy look to it, which I can see the camera's not picking up too well. Then I put it in this Tim Holtz frame. Then I used what I call my mermaid material. Um, it, I just love it. It shimmers all different colors and has like the fins and stuff in it. So I use that on almost all of my uh, mermaid books. Then I put some gold trim around the outside of it, and then the blings in the four corners. Now on the side, this is the original. I decided not to even cover it. And uh, I'm sorry, it just told me low battery. I hope it didn't stop the film for a second. Okay, on the side, I have just a regular tassel, but then I also, if I can get to them, here's one. I've been teaching myself to tat, so I decided that I was going to try to tat a tassel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> say that three times in a row. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um... Anyway, in trying to tat these, I came up with my own designs. I found some shells, put some holes through them. Each one has an O-ring, so you can remove it and put it on another book if you want. This, oh, I've got it all tied up. Okay, this is another one that's got a bunch of the little colored shell pieces and things that was in the package. Then we have this one. This is different shades of uh, variegated whites and blues. Mostly the white is what has showed up, but I have found that you can spray these and dye these any color that you want. Um, there's a little starfish medallion here, a little crab, a couple more starfish, and then this one is like your little glass bottle in the ocean or this one's full of stars to make a wish and then there's one more back here this one's on a bulb clip you can take it off and put it on something else entirely and it's just some different colored little chains and stuff that I thought went with it but I love doing the tatted ones and I like a very full tassel so I try to add a lot and then you can move them around to other things if that's what you choose to do. Okay, this is the original back of the book. See that golding on there? 
I just think these are gorgeous. Then for the closure, I put an O-ring and I tatted another, <laughs> I, I guess it's a tassel, but I'm going to call it a closure this time. I tatted that and I tied this vintage key here onto the end of it. And this just simply comes up and wraps around. But I left enough space that was not tatted so that if you get more than a gator mouth than what I have, you'll still be able to use that tassel to close it. Now I have a bad habit of getting a gator mouth, but a lot of that is because I add a lot of removable pieces. So you can either keep them in or you can move them out and put them in some other journal or just keep them stored with this. A lot of envelopes with ephemera, things like that. So that's entirely up to you on how you want to do those. Okay, now the overall book itself measures six by nine, six wide, nine tall. It does have five signatures, 118 pages. The spine is two inches on this side and about three, three and a half on this side. I can scrunch it down some, but not a lot. But as I get in here, you'll be able to see why. Okay, I will make sure that when I open this, it's all in frame. There we go. Okay, this is the original cover and the original, or I'm sorry, end pages, and the original insides of the book um, for the first few pages, not all of it. This one, my material is attached all the way around and there is a fussy cut mermaid that is underlying on this that I glued down first. Here, I left it open. This is one of Caroline's design team mermaids and it's a mini folder. So what I did is I just put plain parchment paper in there and then I printed on the back side also a design, sewed the parchment paper in, and now you have a little hidden tuck to put notes, messages, whatever. If you find something that you wanna put in here and keep, by all means, you can put it down in there, glue it down, let it move around however you want, and you can glue the top down if you want. Or you can just put a little ball pin or something to hold the top so it doesn't fall out on you someplace. Okay, this one is still a little on the stiff side, but it's getting a whole lot better now. This is the picture that is on the front of the page. I just shrunk it down so that I could fit it into the frame. Here's a little bit of fancy lace. This is the last of the original pages in the front that I used. When I sewed these pages in on this one, I tried something a little different. I sewed them directly to the mermaid material. Then I attached the mermaid material to the inside of the spine and over the end pages to keep everything all connected together. Because this one, the spine was so pretty, I just didn't want to put all of the signature seams, um, bindings and stuff on the outside. I wanted them hidden in this one. Okay, whoops, sorry about that. Okay, this is the first page of the kit, or at least what I put is my first page. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> I just love these mermaids. Now, as I go through here, you'll also see that I have not put something on every single page. A lot of these already have so much on them that if I put very much, it's going to take away from Caroline's designs, I feel. So the ones that had nice writing spaces, I wanted to leave them that way. And then the envelopes can be moved around to cover it or you can use some of the ephemera that's in here and completely cover it, use it like a glue book or something. But I didn't want to put something on every single page and then you not have room to play in this gorgeous uh, book with all these pretty 
little mermaids in here. Okay, here's another one. I believe this is one that I designed. And like I say, there is still lots of writing pages, but I just didn't want to cover everything. Okay, these are care lines. This is a library pocket, and there's two or three in the kit. I love how light they are. I love the colors of blues that she used with the tans. And it just, I don't know, makes my heart happy. This, I believe, is a tag from the Moena kit by Artie Mays. Um, it's been in my stash for quite some time, and I, it's just one that was left over from when I made that kit. So I'm not 100% sure on the who it belongs to, but that's what I'm thinking. Okay, this is all more of um, Caroline's. This is a tag that I made quite some time ago, and it has napkin here on the front. And this one I just lined with plain uh, mint paper to go along with it. And like the envelopes, this is removable to allow a little more thickness if you want. This was a piece of the ephemera in the kit, and so was this. And I took it and put one of her um, mailing stamps on the back of it, of that gorgeous turtle. Okay, this is one that I made out of some ledger paper that I had. And then another kit that I used quite a bit of in here was Octopus Garden. And this is one of the octopus from it. I had printed it on um, mailing labels and then fussy cut it, peeled the back off and stuck him down in here. Octopus is something to, to me that seems hard to get a hold of. So I wanted to throw a little bit of those in here also. Okay, here's some more of Caroline's things. And this is from the Octopus Garden. There's two or three of these mini folders, and I just made those as journaling places. Here's some more of Caroline's designs. I love the tails coming up. This is Caroline's also. I put it on some gauze, but I did glue the entire thing down. I don't know about you all, but when I'm trying to use gauze, if I don't glue it all down and I try to use it as a tuck spot, I end up tearing the gauze completely up. So I just glued that down all the way around. And here's some pretty little seahorses and part of an octopus. This is the back side of that first page. She's waving at you here. Then this is the sea turtles that she did. I love this one. I just love these blues and aquas all together. Here's another of Caroline's little corner tucks. Another mermaid tail. Okay, this one is Octopus Garden again. Just another little mini folder. This is just a little uh, clipboard. I just fussy cut it, put it on here. This is another one of Caroline's stamps. I backed it with some of my mermaid paper. Another one of her beautiful mermaids here. This one is from the octopus kit. I won't take it off. It just has a bunch of ephemera in there that you can use. Here's another one of Caroline's beautiful mermaids. How can you not fall in love with these colors with the lavenders and the greens and yellows and the, all the different colors that she's got in her hair. I just think they're gorgeous. Okay, the base page is Caroline's also. And what I decided to do on this is I took some coffee dyed paper, just roughly tore it, used some of um, my Jane Davenport washi tapes, stuck it down. And then this one is a tuck spot. And it's one of uh, Caroline's maps that was in the kit. And I just kind of haphazardly stuck those in here with a piece of washi tape also. Oh, that one's not wanting to stay down. It's the only problem with washi tape if you don't put glue on it. And apparently I didn't on that piece. So I will have to go back and do that. And we'll put this back on here. 
Okay, here's another one of her mermaids. This is a page out of a little bitty book. Um, it was all about mermaids and things. This is Act 1, Scene 2, called The Tempest. And I think this is the last page I have left, but I just thought that it deserved to be in this book also. Here's some more of her pages. That cute little turtle again. Again, these are Caroline's. This is one of her envelopes. And it does have a bunch of things stuck in it, but I'm not going to show you that. Whoever gets the purchases the book will get to find out what's in there. This is one that I had done. Some more of Caroline's. Tuesday morning uh, last year, sometime when I was over there, they had these packages of cards pre-made. And this one I could not pass up. On the inside it has mermaids. I did glue this one down other than right here. But on the front it has a couple little mermaids where the return address is and uh, whoever you're addressing it to along with a couple little white labels. Sorry about all the glue and stuff on my hands. Then this little gal pulls out, and you have extra writing space in here, and then another picture on the back. This is some mermaid paper that I had. I just cut it in four different lengths, and I stamped on the back for a writing um, tag and then just put all four of them in there so they can be used the same place they can be moved other places taken totally out glued someplace whatever your little heart desires okay this is one of those little page tags and I don't remember who I saw making these they put uh, some ink around the edges just roughly tore up some pages layered three or four and then did some stickles around the edges and sewed a button through I thought that was kind of cute, and the colors to me just went along with this, so I threw that one in. This is another one of Caroline's corner pockets. I did have a package of papers that was all ocean-themed, scrapbook papers, and I'm getting down to where there's pretty well nothing left now. But I took this one with a stencil and done some inking on the inside, and that way you've got another writing place here as well as the page behind it. This is one of the mermaids from the, or mermaids, <laughs> I was reading the label. Uh, here's one of the shells and a little metal crab, one of the tags. This is another one of her library cards. What I did on this one is I put some trim across the front to make it look a little bit more like waves. And I attached it across the back to make it a flip and then I attached a hidden picture underneath of it. Now inside it is a couple of cards from the Octopus Garden library cards, and I just tossed a couple of those in there. Oops. Another one of Caroline's envelopes. This is a hidden paper clip that I had made quite some time ago and there's more things in here. This corner tuck is from the octopus garden and I just put a bunch of um, eyelash trim on it. This is a page that I done, did, oh my, my grammar's gone. Okay, here's another one of Caroline's, and this is backed with uh, some of my marbling paper that I did. And I did get smart when I did the marbling this time. 
I scanned them in before I started cutting the pieces up. I had not done that the first time and I was so disappointed in myself because there were a couple that I just absolutely loved and I didn't scan them, so they're gone. This one, I got this page off of Etsy. It was a shop, it was a single page digital. And when I saw it, I just had to have it. To me, it just went with the entire kit I wish there were more pages to it. I think they would blend very well together, but this is the only page that she had. Again, this is from the Octopus Garden, and it's just blank on the back, so you can put whatever you want. This is some more of the marble paper that I had made. I just kind of give it a rough tear like waves and stuck it down on a little pocket. Another type of eyelash trim here and here. Couple more pages that are a little on the darker side. And you can tell the darker ones, I did those. I've got to, this is the first time I've ever put any of my own digis in one of the kits. And they didn't print as light as what I thought they were on screen. So I've got to play with that a little bit more. But you can definitely tell Caroline's because hers is light and bright and pretty. Now this is one that I did, and I was so tickled with it, I finally got one to pop out right. So I'll use it to, as my pattern and go back and check the settings on what I did on those others. This is from the uh, scrapbook paper again. This is another digi kit that I found, um, but it's all just clip art and you build the scenery that you want in it. And I fell in love with this bubble and the mermaid and then these little betta fish. I thought they were so cute. Okay, this is a belly band from Caroline's kit with another of her envelopes. And I attached it to some lace that I use in all of my mermaid journals. It reminds me of sea waves. And there's another piece back here that I'll show you um, that does a little bit better. This piece my son and I designed. Um, my son is 10 years old. This is the first time that he's been playing with anything like this. So I put a whole bunch of fish on the pages and showed him how to change their colors and sizes. So he's got little things tucked and hid everywhere. And I'll show you the other half of the page here in just a moment. But for his first time, I think he did pretty good. Here's another one with a little octopus. This is just a piece of corrugated paper I tore the top off of. And this is uh, trifold envelopes. I made these together quite a long time ago. It does have a magnet right here to keep it closed. And it's just a bunch of uh, collaging of little bits and pieces that I had left. I put bits and pieces inside the um, envelopes for you to use. So it's things like this that are actually making it bulkier that can be easily taken out. This one has the descriptions from a dictionary on sand crab, sea ward, ocean, seascape, and sea. This is another piece of the material I call my mermaid material. This is another one that my son and I had done. Here's his other half of his fishy page. I thought it turned out quite well. I had to help him a little bit to get seaweeds and things like that in there, but the fish he did really good on. This is another envelope from Caroline and the octopus garden. This is a scenery picture that I built from that clip art of this little mermaid. Octopus Garden Corner Pocket. This is another tag that I made out of a napkin. And on the back of it is another piece of marbled paper that I had done. Um, scrapbook paper here. And just some fun ribbing on the edge of that one. 
So these are both ones that I had done to go along with Caroline's kit. Caroline's again. Octopus Garden. Um, actually, all three of these, I believe, are Octopus Garden. And I just put some parchment paper in here to have to write on, a little piece of trim. This is another one of the belly bands from Caroline's kit. And another napkin. And this one I just did a little stenciling on the back. And I put it on a piece of the mermaid material to make it a little sturdier. This is uh, Octopus Garden. Now this stuff, I don't know. Ooh, knocking some off. I don't know for sure what this is called. I bought it on a big roll, like six feet, a long time ago when I first started doing junk journals. And I've had it in every mermaid journal that I've ever done. It's cut in half, and half is put on each side. So it's about a three-inch roll. It's kind of hard to cut. It feels almost like a jute, but I can tell that it's not, so I'm not sure what this is. But I know I've got to keep my eyes open to find out, uh, try to find out where I got it and to find some more because I'm almost out. Okay, here's a little story that I had found in another kit. I believe these were with Moena, and I put those in. Octopus Garden. And back to Caroline's Mermaid Magic. Oh, I forgot to put a uh, tag in here. I'll have to put one in here before we sell it. Octopus Garden. Here's another tag that I had made out of napkin. And this is some of that Tim Holtz. Um, oh, what is that paper called? Kind of like vapor, baker's paper where you can crinkle it and stuff, but I didn't crinkle it. I wanted the smooth feeling this time. And then I just put a little bit of Jane Davenport's washi around the sides of it. I don't want to push too hard and bend it. Okay, these I had bought several of, well, about 25, 30 of these. Um, this particular one is 1816. They are all um, invoice ledgers and they're larger than any that I had ever seen and I'm going to scan these in because I know that I'm not going to be able to get any more of these but this is an original I used Jane's Davenport or Jane Davenport's uh, washi tape again and some more of my mermaid material and I just put it on a flip so that on the back side you can write on it or add something else to it and the same way right here. Okay, now we're getting almost to the end. This is part of the octopus garden and a little bit more digital that I did on here. And the end of Caroline's here. This is where it attaches to the original pages of the book. I left a couple blank ones so that you can write some more in there. Some more of my um, marbled paper with a little bit of gauze behind it. This is the material I was talking about that reminds me of ocean waves. I turn this into a pocket and you've got several pieces of um, parchment that you can write on here. Right here is a magnet and this is part of what's making the book so thick. It is a trifold. Here in the middle is the only thing that's decorated. I put a pocket with some eyelash tape and just a plain tag for you to use with a little piece of uh, lace down here. But the rest of this is entirely blank. So if you don't want the extra thickness, you can cut it off right here because the magnet is down here. So it would still magnetize. But this could get rid of two pages. Well, actually four pages for you if you didn't want this extra bulk. Otherwise, you've got a little fold-out booklet and places that you can put some of your own things in or store. So that is the end of this book. Like I say, this is Mermaid Magic. The base design digitals are all by Caroline Jensen of Carolyn's Craft Tree.
Caroline's Crafty, I'm sorry. My mother's name was Carolyn, so I keep trying to call her Carolyn. So I hope you like it. I hope you give me a thumbs up. Definitely check out Caroline's Craft Tree on Etsy and her first Facebook page. I will have both linked below. And please leave me some comments if you liked it, um, even if you didn't like it. But if you've told me that you didn't like it, please tell me why so that I can improve on that. Okay, that's it for right now. I hope to see you again real soon. And thank you for watching. Bye.